Hey guys, Kai here with TransformYourGame.net and today we're going to be doing my top 8 deck profile from the Freedom Cup uh, which if you don't know what that is, uh, it's basically a uh, tournament series that's run on the Octagon Facebook group uh, it's run by Jason Crutchfield uh, shout out to you dude for running those tournaments and if you want to know more about what Octagon is uh, how to participate and whatnot, the uh, Facebook group is down below and that'll take you to the Facebook group, which you can find out more information, but um, that's besides the point. Today we're doing the top eight uh, deck profile, which also happens to be the Perceptor deck that I um, promised last week. So Perceptor has been one is has proven to be one of the strongest characters of uh, the game currently, and yeah, let me show you what I've been doing personally with Perceptor. So we're playing Perceptor. And then we're playing Grax for the plus 5 HP head, making him 17 health, which is pretty beefy for uh, an 11 star character. And then we're also playing uh, Decepticon Pounce and Night Racer as our other two partners in crime. So, um, And of course we're playing Stealth Mission with Night Racer, which gives us two extra star cards of secret actions. Um, so this deck has a uh, chump blocker. And then two main attackers in the form of Pounce and uh, Perceptor, and it basically allows you to basically decide who's basically you're going to start beefing up towards um, the mid to for the mid and late game. So that's the character lineup. Uh, we'll go into the battle deck for more explanation because honestly, it's the character lineup that has been is not particularly secret. So, yeah. So, for the weapons, we're playing three handheld blaster, playing three sturdy javelin, two armed hovercraft, two energon axe, two master sword, and two scoundrel blaster. So, uh, scoundrel blaster, if you didn't know, uh, they have ruled it to where if you have an Autobot that has a Decepticon head, they are both considered an Autobot and a Decepticon. So, we no longer have to run the one of dead uh, Nobles Blaster. We can just play two Scoundrels Blaster for the standard plus two for per both Perceptor, Pounce, and uh, Night Racer, as well as Grax. But um, yeah, so that's why we're playing two of those. Um, Energon Axe is still the best weapon, blue weapon in the game. And it combos pretty well, in all honesty, with uh, the Cayman Crashes and the like, which we are playing, so... Still playing too. Uh, armed Hovercraft gets some direct damage in and also lets you replace it into Master Sword pretty easily. Um, so Master Sword specifically is of course the end state that you want to end up on. It basically is the same as you resolving to a showing off with Pounce uh, by basically giving you a uh, plus four attack because realistically most Perceptor piles are going to be two and two. So if you play showing off, then that basically means that you have plus four attack uh, with Perceptor, unless your opponent gives you a wonky pile, which could be better for you, depending on how the pile is. But uh, Master Sword basically just enables you to just ramp, ramp up your Perceptor or your Pounce much quicker than they would normally anticipate. Um, but also it's just really strong at protecting itself, so you don't have to worry too much about having to recommit to your um, stuff. So, really solid. And then Sturdy Javelin, plus two for melee characters, plus or two direct damage for your range character, just very solid. And then, of course, Handheld Blaster is still the most broken weapon in the game. Different from Energon Axe, because Energon Axe is the best weapon, but Handheld Blaster is the most broken. Hands out. No questions. Um, <laughs> so, we're playing for our armors, one reflex circuits, one sturdy armor, one hollow matter projector, and for our one utility enhanced power cell. Um, so these two are still in the deck because they're blue-greens that you can swap out for other things, but I've found that you usually have Perceptor with hollow matter projector, and then you can't put any of these on pounce, and then Night Racer can only wear this, so... These two kind of end up dead unless your opponent bashing shields the projector. So I've been considering going to dropping Bilfides and just playing a second Hollow Matter so that you can play it one on your Pounce and one on your Perceptor. But 
I just need to find some way to, to replace the blue count because one of the weaknesses with this specific list was I was flipping fairly weak on defense because I'm playing so many blanks and whatnot. So um, after I play around with the pip ratios and whatnot, I'll probably come back with another deck profile. But for the time being, this is what I played in the uh, top eight list. So do that. And then Hall Matter, you have to play this if you're playing an Autobot, which is the unfortunate truth because Sky Shadow shooting you for three just hurts way too much. It, it just gives them way too much uh, damage. So there's that. And then Enhanced Power Cell, I think I might end up going up to two on this because every time I saw it, it basically meant that uh, the character I put it on got to see an extra turn. And you really just need the extra turn so that that character can either attack again or just get more use out of them. Like you can flip either Pounce or Perceptor and get more cards. So this card has performed very well. And you can put it on any of your characters. So that's why we're playing that over the Power Cell. Or I mean the Energy Pack. So onto the actions. We're playing three Security Checkpoint. Three Showing Off. Two Spy Masters Ruse, two Caming Crash, and one Brainstorm. Um, no need to talk about this, so it's showing off. Um, doing showing off, you really just want it for Perceptor, so we're playing three copies because it basically means that you can accelerate your Perceptor to a much faster rate than you, you normally would by just having the one transform per turn. And yeah it's it basically just represents like plus two or plus three or just more cards in general with perceptor depending on how you want to see it but yeah you have i feel like if you're playing perceptor you just want to play three of these these copies because of it just represents so much uh ramping with perceptor and whatnot and also just makes them bigger and much more of a threat faster so three of those and then one brainstorm because of showing off you're going to be ramping up fairly quickly so you're going to have multiple actions in your hand that you won't be able to play unless you have the brainstorm. But also it just makes the perceptor piles just more um, obnoxious for your opponent to split. Because if they split this with like another action, like if they like pretend this is just another action. So if they do a pile like this, then it's just almost no reason not to get the brainstorm unless the other pile is like upgrades that you need to win uh, the game. But yeah, brainstorm just adds so much more versatility to your turns. So, and also just more headaches for your opponent. So, just a one of. Uh, I could see going to two, but there's just no room for two right now because of how much secret actions I feel you probably have to play. So, there's that. Uh, two spy masters ruse. I don't think you ever really will ever see a reason to play the third one personally. Um, two is just fine. You see it more often than not because of the green and perceptors. So. It's just a matter of if you can see the secret action to play with, so just two. And then two came in crash because uh, it's just ridiculous how much uh, how good this card is and how much reach it gives you in your action play. So there's that. And then for the secret actions, we are playing two end hostilities, two sabotage armaments, two infiltrate. Two lucky dodge, one take cover, one reflect damage, and one hold the line. Um, hold the line is still good as generic. Uh, take cover is uh, main deck, main board tech for um, horrible mainly because um, ideally you want to get it on a turn where he does like came in crash or something that damages himself so that he has to take two damage and then you, none of your characters take any damage. So. That's ideally the situation you want. It doesn't always happen, nor did I see it at all in the tournament because it, I was just playing a 1 of, so I might just end up playing 2 uh, Reflect Damage just just to ensure that you see it more often because uh, Reflect Damage basically means that you can protect Perceptor from uh, Sky Shadow, which is the most important reason, but also it just protects your um, characters from Kaming Crash, which is which combined with Horrible is just a lot of damage onto your characters, so... Being able to reflect just that damage back is still good. And then two infiltrate working this has been working really well because uh, the majority of the decks out there are orange. So you being able to shut down like PC Tyranny or Supercharge or even uh, Wedge Formation to take away one of their plays for the turn is just really solid. And has been getting more use out of I've been getting more use out of infiltrate than uh, sabotage armaments because I found that 
a lot of the decks now, a lot of the aggro decks now are don't really need to commit a weapon in order to do damage. They like they're not going to do bunk buku amounts of damage because they don't have a weapon, but they're still going to do solid amounts like four and fives, and then it just gets to the point to where this is just laying dead on in play, and then they could still kill you anyway. So I found this just less useful than infiltrates or end hostilities. Um, throughout the tournament but as this is still solid because it has still this can still win you a game if your opponent needs the weapon in order to win that turn uh and hostilities is and hostility is just really strong and then the lucky dodges so um this card i'm still back and forth on it for this deck personally because you have to play the showing offs i feel like this is probably going to be the situation that i'm going to put myself in because uh, there were games where I had two lucky dodges and I needed only needed to resolve one but I couldn't resolve one or if I did resolve one I would win the game basically on the spot because that would give give me two attackers but um, you only need to, you basically the, the lesson is you only need to see one uh, lucky dodge in order to attempt to try to get lucky so uh, going forward I would probably consider playing uh, this one heroic resolve, one lucky dodge, just for the additional double blue. Because we have to compensate so much with the showing off, the lucky dodge, reflect damage, hall matters, it just makes your blue density just much lower. So having the one of double blue probably would help with that. But this is what I ended up playing. I won I won a lot of matches because I was playing because I was able to see it more often, so I don't really know. But going forward i think that's probably going to be what i do but lucky dodge has also been just really solid just being able to uh protect either perceptor or pounce with the flexibility of um it is just really solid so that's the uh secret actions and the main board so for the sideboard we were um i was playing chrome dome so chrome dome is specifically used for uh, matchups where your opponent is just going just going to ramp so fast on one their first or second turns that you just can't really keep up with them with Perceptor because I found that in the aggro matchups, Perceptor probably flips you're probably able to only get like one set of pile of cards under him, or maybe two if you open showing off. But um what Chrome Dome, it basically limits it basically lets you use your flips to limit your opponent's plays and if they aren't, if they, if you can snipe their um, superchargers or belligerences out of their hand with Chrome Dome, then you basically have a better shot. And Chrome Dome, when he flips to this mode, he has five attack, which is the same as Perceptor does after he does his flips and whatnot. So it's basically about the same. It's just Chrome Dome doesn't ramp as hard as Perceptor does, nor does he give you as much card advantage. So um, some trade offs there, but honestly. The matchup, the one or two times that I did side into Chrome Dome, it did help. Um, so in uh, the top eight match that I ended up siding this in, it was against King Me Please, and uh, he was playing uh, Sky Shadow or not Sky Shadow, excuse me. He's playing Fangry with uh, Clobber, uh, Horrible with Grax, and then Night Racer, and then he was playing the Swap Head Stratagem. And basically, what he would do was he would swing with Grax first, or he would swing with Horror, or oh excuse me, he's pretty much Fangry first. You get uh, the first bolt three out of the way with um, Clobber, and then he would still be able to get um, a high amount of. He would basically get bolt five because he would attack into Perceptor, and then he would swap heads next turn onto Horrible, and then get another bolt three onto uh, Pounce or something, and that was just a lot of damage that I just couldn't fend off without. Uh, drawing into either a double five gyro blaster, which I was not main decking or side decking, or just being able to, um, yeah, there was real no no real way that I could stop that outside of end hostilities as well. But uh, with Chrome Dome, when I sided it in, it was basically to prevent him from getting as much use out of that outside of the bolt three as possible. So that's pretty much where you want to side Chrome Dome in for those types of matchups where you have to limit their plays. Um, but yeah, other than that, the, the rest of the sideboard is two belligerents, two tripwire, two stable cover, 
one in hostilities, one infiltrate, one counter espionage, and one reprocess. So, um, stable cover specifically. 40 orange black matchups, the uh, Burgos Bold style decks. Uh, I did play against one of them, which was Timothy Theo. Um, he basically destroyed me game one, and then game two, I did not have the stable cover. And then he played Heat of Battle, so that was, I basically just got ran over. But it's this is basically for those matchups. Uh, and hostilities and infiltrate still really solid against the blue matchups, so, or uh, excuse me, for the blue decks against the orange decks so uh sideboard these i think it might come to a point to where i might end main board three and three but for now it's just in the sideboard uh reprocess uh, i chose not to main board any upgrade hate specifically because uh the only weapons that you care about uh scrapping they're going to just scrap themselves anyway and then they have to play around sabotage armaments anyway which they ended up doing because they would never really commit a weapon because if I had a face down secret action because they didn't want it to get blown up by sabotage armament so uh, the only thing reprocess is just in, to, in the sideboard to hit is um, energy packs, enhanced power cells, increase their abilities, basically stuff like that um, so we have one of those in there for blue matchups as well as just uh, in general we're gonna have to get rid of those. Uh, two belligerents it's just I don't really think you need to main board it because you're not really going getting the full use out of it because uh, the meta right now is a bunch of orange decks and some blue decks here and there and it's it's really just blows out the blue matchups and it only is okay as a plus two maybe against orange decks so yeah I, I think it's just better just to sideboard it and then two tripwire I chose to respect the airstrike patrol so you know Two tripwire will shut them down pretty pretty easily, and then uh, counter espionage for the uh, grind games with the blue decks because um, yeah counter espionage just puts in a lot of work and also just gets rid of uh, secret actions for um, their pounces and whatnot so it's still in their forty grind games with the blue matchups but yeah that's the deck. Um, as I said before, I ended up getting top 8 with it, which was very nice. Um, I didn't think I was going to top with it, but I think tie match the, um, the tiebreakers were in my favor, so I was, I was able to squeak in as like the last, uh, last seed of top 8. But uh, yeah, that's the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know what the next, what next deck profile will be. It probably might be a more fun one. Um, but we'll see because I got I got some stuff in the works, so we'll see where I go from there. But so that'll be it for this deck profile. Be sure to like the video if you like this stuff and maybe subscribe if you enjoyed it. But um yeah. That's this is me, Kai, signing off. Later.